information for county seniors on East Link Community TV. My name is Debbie McDonald Moines. I'm your host. I'm also the executive director of the Prince Edward County Community Care for Seniors Association, and I'm producer of the show. The technical support is provided by Marjorie Vilnef. Marjorie is with Community Care for Seniors and Robert Schroen, who is with the Kinsman Club of Picton. So thank you to both of them. This is our first episode and our first guest is Laura McGugan. Laura is a coordinator with Community Care. Welcome, Laura, we're glad you're here today. Thanks, Debbie, great to be here. So today we're going to be talking about the current services available from Community Care for Seniors during this pandemic. There's lots going on, isn't there, Laura? You found that. There is definitely lots going on and it's uh, ever changing. Day by day, we seem to be uh, making changes, but we're very happy that we're able to support seniors within Prince Edward County during this time, doing what we've always done. Yes, Community Care has been doing that, um, providing services in Prince Edward County for 43 years now. And uh, even during the pandemic, Although the office is closed and the lights are off in the office at 74A King Street in Picton, there's lots of activity, activity going on. Can you tell us about that? We are still able to provide services, uh, certain services to clients. So we've been uh, continuing with our Meals on Wheels program, hot and frozen. We've also been continuing doing uh, reassurance calls. We've been um, able to do, uh, um, sorry, uh, delivery of groceries. We actually set up that program uh, during the pandemic, which was amazing and we've had great response. And we are continuing doing some active living programs, but virtually things are, um, the programs are very similar, uh, but the way we deliver them is a little bit different during this time. Talk about each of those things, uh, those programs in turn, Laura. Um, community Care has been providing Meals on Wheels since 1980, so that's 40 years this year. And in the 40th year, there's been an expansion to of delivery of hot meals to everywhere in Prince Edward County. So, what can a person who calls us about delivery of pro of hot meals expect from that program? So with regards to uh, our hot meal program, it is still a, a new time program. So we deliver the meals between 11.30 and 1.30. Um, everything that's happening with Meals on Wheels is uh, we're prop uh, practicing the proper protocols with physical distancing um, that happens with the meal providers, as well as when the volunteers deliver to the clients. Uh, we are placing the meals uh, on their doorsteps, door handles, um, but we're still doing security checks. Volunteers wait for the clients to make sure they did receive their meal. Um, and if not, that's obviously when we would um, reach out to see that, make sure that they're okay. So. A lot of the program is um, the same, but it's just the way we're delivering that we've had to make the changes to make sure we're doing the physical distancing. But one thing that's different is now community care has the capacity to provide uh, delivery of those hot meals anywhere in Prince Edward County. And that is different, it's up three days a week, anywhere in Prince Edward County. Yes, we're delivering Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, prior to the pandemic, we were delivering uh, Picton, Wellington routes, as well as the north end of uh, Prince Edward County. But now we have expanded everywhere. So we can go to Milford, Cherry Valley. Um, you know, uh, we can go down to uh, Long Point if that's required. So we're definitely uh, been able to expand and we're very excited about this. Yes, and that is because of the wonderful volunteers that are here, right here in Prince Edward County. We've had an extremely uh, positive response from uh, people that are willing to uh, volunteer. We've always had wonderful volunteers here, but my goodness, it has been something else to witness, hasn't it, Laura? It has. When the pandemic, uh, when we started to have to close things and suspend certain programs, uh, we had the community members reach out to us, call in the office saying if you need support, if we can help volunteer in whatever capacity we would certainly uh, like to. So uh, it was great. We were able to bring on a number of new volunteers to help with deliver Meals on Wheels and uh, also grocery, uh, grocery delivery and reassurance calls. Yeah. 
Now, before we leave Meals on Wheels, let's talk about uh, the fact that anyone 60 plus is eligible for uh, delivery of those hot meals. They just need to call the office and at the end of the show, we'll put up the telephone numbers so they can do that. Uh, leave a detailed message and we will call back. Um, the, uh, the other thing though is that important reassurance that you mentioned when a person um, signs up for this program. That's just an, a, an essential component to the meals, Hot Meals and Wheels program, don't you think? It is very much so. You know, with um, caregivers not being necessarily within the community, it brings them peace of mind that they know someone is checking in on their mom or dad or grandma and grandpa three times a week. And what happens is if the client doesn't answer the door, you know, we try a couple of times just to uh, make sure maybe they didn't hear the doorbell. But eventually, if they don't answer, we do, uh, with the volunteers know to call the office and then we reach out to their emergency contacts that they've provided so that we can have someone go check on them and it just brings peace of mind to the client and also uh, caregivers um, when they know that someone is uh, checking up on their um, loved ones. Mm -hmm. and, I, and the meals that we deliver are very tasty. They're, they're prepared in uh, Picton by Bill and Marnie Grieve of The View and uh, Wheelhouse and Occasions Catering. They operate both businesses and in the northern part of Prince Edward County by Darlin Debbie's Restaurant there in the Rossmore Stop. Now, before we move on to another program, Laura, I'd just like you to tell uh, our viewers about the Frozen Meal Program. It's also excellent and provides a little different service for people that would prefer to do it this way. Yeah, the Frozen Meal Program, um, it, we order uh, twice a month. They're delivered for free twice a month. Um, and they just provide uh, a lot of options with what you can choose food-wise because you can get entrees, you can get frozen soups, you can also get desserts. I know a lot of people like the soups and desserts, they're uh, quite tasty, as well as the meals. But it gives you that option because you can have soups for lunch, uh, entrees for dinner, and also it just allows you to be able to, if you're just not having a great day and you don't want to prepare any meals that day, you have that option of being, being able to grab something for both lunch and dinner dinner that you can heat up either in the microwave or, or in the stove and they are quite good. I've, had, I've yes. sampled a few. <laughs> yes, I've tried them myself too. They're low sodium so they're, they're the kind, not the, not the same as what a person can get in the grocery store which are often very high in sodium. They're also um, a wide range of spe special diets so a person who has diabetes, um, there's vegan, there's gluten-free, so there's such a wide range. People really do need to call the office and find out all the details of the uh, frozen meal program. These are provided to us through Appetito and, uh, and they are very, very good. It's, it's an excellent company to be dealing with. You did mention though, Laura, about the delivery of groceries. Now that's a new program for community care. Yeah, it is a, a new program. Um, we recognize that some people weren't going to be necessarily able to go into grocery stores because they chose to uh, self-isolate. So we um, quickly and thoughtfully uh, prepared this program, developed this program, and now what we're doing is we're uh, delivering um, groceries uh, to clients, again, anywhere in Prince Edward County, um, and using um, the stores that are available to offer um, delivery of groceries, the ones that will pick orders and things like that. So we have Sobeys, Metro, and uh, Foodland in um, Wellington. Yes. Now, those stores all require people to either email in their order or one of them has an online order form. So what about seniors that don't have a computer? What can they do? Well, what we've done is we have a few volunteers that are tech savvy. And if you're unable to um, place an order by email or online for whatever reason, you can call the office. We will set you up with a volunteer who will take you or take your order and submit it. Um, and then once uh, you know when your order is ready for pickup, we can provide the delivery uh, if that's what you would like. Yes. Yeah, so a person can just have the um, meal order or the, uh, the groceries ordered for them and then they could pick them up themselves with the curbside delivery or community care for free. This is all a free program um, can both place the order and 
pick up and deliver the groceries. And again, we'll deliver anywhere in Prince Edward County. Isn't that right? Yes, we will deliver anywhere in Prince Edward County. And we've had a great response since starting up that program. A lot of clients have really benefited from it and really appreciate the fact that we're able to, whether they place the order themselves or we have to place the order for them, they really appreciate um, that we're able to do it. And it just allows them peace of mind, uh, to have peace of mind so that they know they don't have to uh, go into any stores if that's what they're choosing to do. Again, just call the office find out all the details for this. Now you mentioned also Laura reassurance calls and you know during the pandemic there have been so many seniors and others, all of us, isolated and so these reassurance calls must be very important to the people receiving them. They are. We have a group of volunteers. Uh, we've been calling over uh, 1,900 clients um, since uh, the end of March, we've been doing this and uh, it's been fantastic. We have some volunteers who are checking up on clients uh, every few weeks and then we have a group of volunteers that are reaching out to clients who would like a call uh, two to three times a week. They have a nice conversation. It's a check-in to make sure they're doing okay. It's also an opportunity for them to find out what services we are providing or if they have questions because something's come up and they're not sure what to do. Uh, we can certainly, uh, the volunteers get in touch with us and then we try to figure out how we can help the client if there's anything that they're needing. But the conversations have just been great. People have been learning. Uh, some of the volunteers who are newer to the county have been learning a lot about the, like, the county from clients. And even for the volunteers, it's been wonderful because they're hearing how families are uh, really supporting each other and helping their loved ones and how the community is coming together during this time. Oh yes, I know there have been some wonderful things that we've heard. And we've heard also that the volunteers are getting as much out of the phone calls as the people that they're phoning. So anyone watching who would like to have a phone call from these caring and very caring volunteers, do please just, again, call the office and we can make arrangements for that. We have these amazing volunteers willing to make these calls and getting as much out of it as the people that they telephone. Um, mm -hmm. um, such an important thing, eh, Laura? The telephone, in fact. We, we've <laughs> yeah, gone is. back to the phone. It is going, you know, it, it, it really is going back to uh, old school ways, I guess, with certain things and uh, people using the telephone, picking that up, even just not even with our volunteers, but we're also hearing how family members are calling out, reaching out to more people. And then if you're a little more tech savvy, uh, these Zoom meetings are certainly taking off as well so people can connect. It's amazing how we're able to find ways to um, stay together while being asked to also stay apart. Yes, in these times, it's, it's adapt and be flexible and try something new. And we are also offering weekly webinars of interesting speakers and topics that seniors can come in by Zoom and do the, uh, do the video and watch it that way. But we also have a, a weekly chat um, on the phone for those people that don't use a computer, that, that have a telephone or don't want to use a computer. And that's going well too, isn't it, Laura? It is. That's through our active living uh, program. So uh, every Thursday is when we do the webinars uh, by Zoom. Um, and then every Friday we have uh, county chats uh, on the telephone um, with the active living programs to just try if it's something new to you. Uh, you can certainly try a webinar for free uh, once and then same as the phone calls. And then if you're really interested um, ongoing, you can become a member of the active living programs and be able to uh, tap into all the webinars and telephone calls that we're able to uh, provide. Because when you are a member, you do get a notice of what is upcoming regarding webinars and uh, county chats. Yes, and there's other uh, two more programs just very quickly before we uh, we call this uh, episode to the quits today. Uh, Laura, there were a couple of programs, well there were several programs that community care had to put on hold because of the pandemic and now have restarted those programs. So I'm thinking about income tax and about outdoor um, yard garden work and grass cutting. Both of those are back um, in action, aren't they, right now? 
They are income tax program. We were able to start up a couple of weeks ago, which was very exciting because we know uh, there was a lot of uh, seniors very concerned about this. The deadline uh, had been extended to June 1st. So now we do have um, an operation in place so that we can make sure we're doing this uh, safely and properly. Uh, so again, if you are an eligible senior for this uh, income tax program, please call the office and we'll get in touch with how you can drop off your information and how we'll get your tax is done for you and then the home maintenance program that's where we have brokered workers who will do outside work like cutting the grass um, weeding gardening those type of things uh, we've been able to put back into play and again just call the office um, that's the main theme here today call the office and we can get you the information whether it's to set you up as a client um, and to provide you with names of workers who can do um, what you're looking for that's right Call the office because even if uh, we haven't talked about something today, we might well be offering it by the time this uh, is on the television and you see it. Things are changing on a daily basis. It's, uh, it's something that we do our best to keep up with. Laura, I'm so pleased to have you with us today on our very first episode of Information for County Seniors on Point. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. So you have been watching Information for County Seniors on Eastlink Community TV, showing in Pickett. My name is Debbie mcdonald Moyes. I'm your host, and I'm also the Executive Director of the Prince Edward County Community Care for Seniors Association. Thanks very much for being with us today.